Welcome to the Canadian edition of the Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. I started watching Andrew. Everything that he said had a witness within my spirit and he made the word come alive. You know, he just helped me connect dots. I have such a passion and a love for the word of God and he deepened that for me. And now here's Andrew. Welcome to our Wednesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today is my third day of teaching on this series, and I tell you, this is really powerful. I credit just nearly everything that uh, good that has happened in my life from God speaking to me and showing me what to do. And I've spent a lot of time talking about this. Like I said, this is my third day. The very first day, I just tried to emphasize how important it is to hear God's voice. Yesterday, I was sharing that one of the very first steps in hearing God's voice is that you've got to seek it. And I use Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 to show that His plans for us are only plans of peace. They're plans of good, not of evil, so that we could have an expected end. But then it goes on to say that you have to seek with all of your heart before you find. And one of the reasons that we don't hear the voice of God and receive His guidance in our life is because we can live without it. Most of us have been brought up not to look to God for Him speaking to us. Most people don't even believe that that's possible. They might think that there's just a few super saints that have God speak to them on a daily basis and show them things, but that that's not for every Jane Doe and Joe Blow uh, Christian, that you ha have to have somehow or another be special. But I'm going to be continuing to share some things with you and, and show you that God wants to speak to every one of you individually, personally. It says that He calls His sheep by name. That means it's personal. He doesn't just speak generically to everybody. He wants to have a personal relationship. Adam and Eve, God met with them in the cool of the evening every day and talked to them and had relationship with them. God wants to speak to you. And of course, I've used a lot of examples about He wants to give you guidance, but God just wants to speak to you personally. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to tell you how much He loves you. He wants to hear what's going on with you. He wants to meet your needs. You need to hear God's voice, but it, it, the first step is you got to seek it. If you seek, you find. If you don't seek, you don't find. In context of what I'm talking about, if you aren't seeking to hear God's voice, you won't. It's not that God isn't speaking, it's that you aren't listening. You have to tune your ears to hear God's voice. It's like a radio or something. You have to tune that and put it on the right dial. You know, many of you who are watching this television program, you're young and you don't, you don't remember this, but back when I was a kid, we only had three television stations. There weren't hundreds and you didn't have cable or anything, and you had to get the antenna in just the right position, and then the signal would float, and sometimes you'd have to go readjust the dial and tune it just a little bit. Same thing with the radio. The signal would float in and out, and you would sometimes have to tune it and move it a little bit. I guess now they've built into televisions and radios something internally that follows that signal, and you don't have to do this. So some of you that are younger may not know what I'm talking about. But use that older example of a television signal and a radio signal. This is the way it is. You have to tune your hearing to hear the voice of God. And it's, He's always speaking. He's always there. But you have to tune yourself. You have to seek. So that's the very first step is that you have to seek. And then the second thing that I would say is that you need some knowledge. And as we continue to go through this series, I'm going to be showing you specific things that God has taught me about how to hear God's voice that have made a huge difference in my life. I mean major. I've I had God speak some things to me that when I heard it and when I obeyed and did what He told me to do, it forced my life in a certain direction. I mean, literally, it just was like a U-turn. And it put me on a path that... I would have had to have literally backslid on the Lord to keep from seeing some of the good things that God has done in my life come to pass. I mean, that's how powerful this is. But 
I, before I get into sharing those specifics, uh, you need to know that the first step is you got to seek. If you seek, you find. If you don't, you won't. But then you need some knowledge. Here in 2 Peter chapter 1, in verse 2, it says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And these are powerful passages of Scripture. It says that it's the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord that gives you grace and peace. And yet there's a lot of people praying for peace, but they don't have the right knowledge. It says in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, that the Lord will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon him because he trusteth in him. That again is relating your peace to what you know, your mind. You have to keep your mind stayed upon the things of God. So if you are just praying for peace and saying, oh God, please give me peace in my family, peace in my finances, peace with my health and peace with the future and you're looking at this world that looks like it's lost its mind and people are just literally crazy and it's taking away your peace. You don't just get peace by praying for it and all of a sudden some, some anointing just falls upon you and, and peace comes over you like a blanket. No, it comes through the knowledge of him. If you have a lack of peace in your life in any way, it's because you have a lack of knowledge. You aren't thinking spiritually, scripturally. If you were thinking according to the Word of God, Romans chapter 8, verse 6 says, To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Spiritually minded is word minded. John chapter 6, verse 63, Jesus said, It's the spirit that quickens, the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are alive. So to be spiritually minded is to be word minded, to think according to what God's word says, to have his values, his opinion, his outlook on things. And if you aren't using the word of God and controlling yourself, it says that the carnal mind is enmity against God. It can't be subject to the law of God. And all it produces is death. So there's, there are many of you who are praying for peace, but you're thinking carnally. You are thinking contrary to the word of God. You, aren't, you haven't adopted the values and the principles of the Word of God. And according to the Word, you aren't going to have peace. You've got to keep your mind stayed upon God. You have to be spiritually minded to have life and peace. So you're praying for life and peace, but you're thinking carnally. It doesn't work. You need the right knowledge. You need the knowledge of God's Word. And I tell you, I see this happen all the time, that people pray for peace, they pray for healing, they pray for prosperity, they pray for all of these things, but then their thinking is just completely contrary. You've got to recognize that if you have a deficiency in your life, you've got a knowledge problem. And I'm not talking about secular knowledge, going to college and getting something. You have a deficiency in understanding the Word of God. And it goes on to say in the next verse, in verse 3, it says, according, the word according means in proportion to or to the degree of. So this grace and peace will be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God according to, in proportion to, His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue. So in verse 2, it was basically saying grace and peace is multiplied unto you through knowledge. In verse 3, it says everything that pertains to life and godliness. Man, that's pretty inclusive. Everything that pertains to life, that certainly includes healing. That includes finances. That includes just basically everything. Uh, everything that pertains unto life and godliness comes through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue. If you've got a sickness in your body, you've got a knowledge problem. Now, you can pray and you can fast and you can ask God to heal you, and I'm saying those things in their place are okay, but basically you got a knowledge problem. I know that until I heard about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues, you know, it didn't just come upon me. I had to pursue it. I had to seek those things. I had to gain some knowledge. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You could also say that knowledge comes by hearing through the Word of God. 
And until I begin to understand some things from the Scripture, God didn't force this baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues upon me. I had to understand it. I had to believe. I had to receive. I had to seek it. And see, this is what I'm saying. I'm talking about how to hear God's voice. The very first point I made was you've got to seek it. And then the second point that I'm making today is you've got to have some knowledge. You've got to understand some things that God revealed to us in the Word of God, how He communicates with us and how you can hear God's voice. And so you can't only just seek. You've also got to have some knowledge. Everything that pertains unto life and godliness comes through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue. And then in verse 4 it says, whereby, it's talking about this knowledge, through this knowledge are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So this knowledge of God gave us the Word of God. And so therefore I believe I'm accurate to say that this Bible, the Word of God, is the knowledge of God. And everything that pertains unto life and godliness comes through His knowledge, comes through His Word. So as we're talking about how to hear God's voice, you first of all got to recognize that this is not just for the super saint. This is for every one of us. He wants to communicate to you. He wants to give you His, uh, uh, the ability to hear His voice. You have to seek it in order to get it. it. You have to seek with all of your heart, Jeremiah 29, 13. And then today I'm sharing with you that you've got to gain some knowledge. This Word will show you how to hear God's voice. It'll not only teach you the, the, I don't know the proper word, the techniques or the methods of hearing His voice, but it will give you examples. It'll show you people like Moses, David, Elijah, and on and on you could go just mentioning all the people. Paul, I mentioned on the very first day, Ananias out of Acts chapter 9. Ananias was just a believer. He wasn't the leader of the church. He wasn't an elder. He was just a believer. And God spoke to him and said, Ananias, and he said, I am here. Speak for your servant hears. And God spoke to him. And because of it, Paul or Saul at that time, became the Apostle Paul. He had his eyes opened up, baptized in the Holy Spirit, and received prophecies about how he was going to be the Apostle to the Gentiles. And Paul wound up writing half of the books in the New Testament. And a large part of that was because a man named Ananias was just available, and God spoke to him and told him to go into a certain street, named the name of the street, told him the name of the person whose house he would be living in and told him to go there and uh, to minister to Saul. All because he heard the voice of God. You, You will learn some things through the Word of God about how to hear God's voice. But you've got to, first of all, know it's for you. You've got to recognize you have to seek in order to find, and then you have to get some knowledge. The Word of God is the knowledge of God, and the Word of God will teach us how to hear God's voice. Man, that is important. That's powerful. The next thing that I would say is that you have to, first of all, know that God wants to speak to you. You've got to seek it. You've got to gain some knowledge, and that we're going to be sharing a lot of that with you through the Word of God. But then you also have to be still or be quiet and listen. And this is something that I believe is one of the biggest detriments to us hearing the voice of God is that our lifestyle today is just so busy. If you ask the average person, how are you? They're going to make some kind of a response like, well, man, I'm busy. I often tell people I'm busier than a one-armed paper hanger. (laughs) Amen. That's a word picture showing that, man, you are busy. And we just have a busy lifestyle, and it literally hinders us from hearing the voice of God. You know, I had a situation where it was the year that uh, President Reagan died and that he was put in state and laid in state in Washington, D.C. And it just so happened that Jamie and I were there holding a uh, meeting in um, Virginia, right outside of Washington when that happened. And so we went to Washington. We stood in line. We went through the rotunda. We saw the body of President Reagan lying in state. 
And anyway, during that time, I was walking the mall in Washington, and it was a gravel that I was walking on. And as I walked along, I was by myself. There was nobody else around me. And I was walking along on this gravel, and I just noticed. I said, this is strange, because I knew that walking on gravel like that should make a sound. And yet I couldn't hear it. I couldn't hear my footsteps. And I didn't, I didn't think much about it at that time, but I just observed that. And I took note of that. And I thought, I wonder why it is that I can't hear me walking on this gravel. And then immediately after we were there, we went to the Shenandoah National Forest and I walked on the Appalachian Trail. And I was out there in the, in the woods totally by myself. And I was walking on this gravel trail. And I mean, every footstep that I took, I mean, it was loud. And it was so quiet in the surroundings that it just was, I mean, it was really loud. And I noticed, I said, how come I can hear my footsteps on this trail, walking the Appalachian Trail, and I couldn't hear my footsteps when I was walking on the gravel in Washington, D.C. And it just dawned on me that it was because of all the ambient noise. It was because there was planes going over. There was cars going by. There were tour groups. There was sirens. There was, all, there was just so much other noise that it was drowning out this uh, noise that my feet were making as I was walking on this gravel. But when I got out into the woods and it was totally quiet, man, it was making a lot of noise. And as I thought about this, the Lord spoke to me and he says, that's the way that most people, my life, he was speaking directly to me, but it's not limited to me. It's true of all of us that our lifestyle, we just have so much noise coming at us every day. There are some people that can't get in their car without leaving the radio on and you've got to be listening to something. There's some people that you can't be at home without having something playing, the TV on. We are just constantly being bombarded with things. We are constantly taking our phone and looking at the latest news story, and we are just, we are having so much information bombard us from every single area and direction that it's drowning out this still, small voice of the Lord. So one of the things I'd like to say about how to hear God's voice is you've got to be still. You've got to have some downtime, some quiet time to where you can just shut out all of these other voices and begin to start hearing God's voice. Man, that is important. And most people don't even recognize how that our lifestyle, our culture that we have today is not conducive to hearing God's voice. We have our minds so dominated by all of the things that we're thinking on and stuff that, you know, some people will say, well, I don't have a lot of quantity time, but I have a lot of quality time with God. I devote 10 minutes, 15 minutes a day to a devotion. Well, I'm not saying that that's bad, but I'm saying it's not enough. You need more than that. We get so preoccupied with the affairs of this life and all of the things that are going on that most of the time you can't just clear yourself of all of the attention that you're giving to your work, to your family, to your financial situation, to your health and to all these things. You just can't clear yourself of that in five or ten minutes. Sometimes it takes a while that you have to separate yourself. I know that often I will just separate myself and spend a few days just doing nothing but seeking the Lord, turn off my phone, turn off all of the things that normally have inroad into my life, and I'll just set myself apart and I'll seek the Lord. And nearly every single time, I'd say the vast majority of the time that I do that, God speaks something to me special, something significant that makes a huge difference in either my personal life or in my ministry. And every time it happens. And so I wonder why I don't do this more. But you know, you just get busy. I've got so many things that I'm doing and our busyness is a detriment to us hearing the voice of God. You know, I woke up one morning and I'm a vivid dreamer and God speaks to me in dreams a lot. And I woke up one morning and I just had a dream and I saw this banner that said Psalms 4610. And I've quoted that verse hundreds, maybe thousands of times. You would think I could remember it, but honestly, in this dream, I could not force myself 
to think about what Psalms 46.10 said. So as soon as I woke up, I went and turned over to Psalms 46.10, which says, Be still and know that I am God. And because of the way it was presented to I just felt like there was something specific, uh, specific that God wanted to say to me through that. And so that day, this was in the summer, and Jamie went, went into the town to do some shopping or something. And I just sat out on our uh, patio. And I mean, I sat in a chair and I was still. I believe that that verse means more than just physically not moving. It's talking about stilling your heart, stilling your mind and stuff. But just to make sure, I determined I was going to sit stone still and not move. And I mean, I, I was so still that I actually had a deer walk up and nearly touch her nose to my nose because, you know, they don't have real good eyesight. And if, they're, if you're um, upwind or downwind from them, they can't smell you and stuff. And anyway, because I wasn't moving, this deer walked up and just nearly put her nose on my nose because she could see me, but I wasn't moving. And, and anyway... One of the things that I learned through that, just sitting there for, I think it was an hour and a half or two hours, and I didn't move, I just began to recognize things that were there all the time, but that I was busy and I wasn't paying attention to. I, I recognized things like I could hear a bird. We live out in the country, and I can't even see another house from my place. And I mean, we are out by ourselves and I could hear birds that when these crows would fly by, you could hear their wings, the sound, you know, going whoo, 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 like that. And I guess that happened all of the time, but I was too busy to really pay attention. And I just began to notice birds and things that I hadn't noticed. There was thousands of ants that I began to start watching them and, and they were going and foraging for food. And, and I was watching these ants. There were chipmunks. We had dozens of chipmunks, and I was sitting so still, I actually had one crawl up my leg and sit on my knee. And there were chipmunks around, and we had uh, turkeys walk by, and we had deer and all of these things. And I just began to hear sounds and see things that were there all of the time, but that I wasn't noticing. And this is one of the things that I learned through that, that those things were there it's not that all of a sudden the ants came out, the chipmunks came out, the birds and all of these things. They were there all of the time, but I was just too busy to notice. And when I sat still and just didn't focus on anything else, I began to pay attention. I began to perceive things that were there all of the time, but that I was missing. And you know, this is one of the things that we have to do in order to hear the voice of God. God speaks to us, I believe, every moment of every day. God is constantly trying to point us in the right direction and speak to us about the decisions we're making and, and trying to fellowship with us. And He's trying to minister to us, but most of us are so busy that the noise, the sound, the, uh, our attention that we give to all these other things is drowning it out. And you have to be still and know that He is God. Psalms 46.10. Am I a mistake? Did God overlook Why me? Why do I still deal with depression? I need direction. Why does life feel meaningless? Have I wasted my Why life? Is God Why don't I know what to do? Have blown it? God's people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. If you've got any problem in your life, it's really because you don't understand fully what God has done. This word is the greatest gift that God has ever given us because this is how we know Him. I'm promising you, preparation time is never wasted time. Regardless of what you feel that God has called you to do, you need to be prepared. At Karis Bible College, you will be transformed by the Word of God. You will develop your relationship with God and ability to hear His voice. That is what is going to transform your life, your vision, and your future. It's not too late. Stop disqualifying yourself. No matter who you are or what you've done, God still has a plan for you. I'd like to let all of you, our Canadian viewers, know that we have a Bible college in Toronto, and we would love to have you come and be a part of it. There's multiple ways you can take advantage, not only through the campus there in Toronto, but we have online courses, we have correspondence courses, 
uh, just a number of ways, but we want to help you and we're making it as available to you as we possibly can. So check it out. The information's on your screen, our Carius Bible College, Toronto. To learn more about the vision and mission of Andrew Womack Ministries Canada, be sure to visit our website at awmc.ca. While there, you'll also find details about all of the products available and be able to access many of Andrew's teachings absolutely free. Remember, that's awmc.ca. All right, so in the name of Jesus, here we go. One, two, three. We have officially broke ground. Praise God. Thanks to the support of our friends and partners, Andrew has continued the expansion of our Karis Bible College campus so that we can raise up more disciples to take the gospel further and deeper than ever before. Because you play such an important role in raising up this next generation, Andrew has decided to give monthly construction updates so that you can see the progress of what your giving and prayers have produced. Visit awmi.net slash Karis Campus to see our most recent update today. One of the ways that people have been giving is what we call legacy giving. This is an end of life gift. And so I would encourage you to check it out. We'll have some information there on the screen, but this is a way of you just continuing your giving. Even after you've gone to be with the Lord, you can still be a blessing to all of the people that we're ministering to. So check out the information on the screen and become a part of our legacy giving today. Andrew is offering his booklet, Four Basics of Hearing God's Voice, as his free gift to you today. This booklet is limited to one free booklet per household and is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. Once again, I'd like to encourage you to please get these materials that we're offering. This little booklet, a 60-page booklet, is our free gift to you, and I believe it would really minister to you. It's just a brief synopsis of this whole teaching that I have entitled Four Basics of Hearing God's Voice. You can get it in CD, DVD. You can also get a copy of a teaching that I did at one of our conferences, four hours worth of teaching on this, and then we also have a USB on this. So I believe that this could really make a difference in your life, hearing the voice of God. That's what it's all about. If you don't know how to follow His voice, you'll never see His perfect will come to pass in your life. So check it out, especially this free booklet on four basics of hearing God's voice. Andrew's complete series, Four Basics of Hearing God's Voice, is available in a CD or TV DVD album and as a USB made from our daily television broadcast. This teaching is also available as a DVD album or USB recorded live at a ministry event. Each of these valuable resources is available when you contact us. Go to our website at awmc.ca to see all the ways you can get these products. Or you can call the Andrew Womack Ministries Canada Helpline Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time at 647 348 2220 to order.